This meeting is being recorded. Greetings and welcome to Mount Olympus. I am Hercules Invictus and today I'm very proud to bring you Living Labyrinths with Athena Dugan. Uh, before we start, I will be taking you to mythic Atlantis for a little while. By exploring the legends and lore of lost Atlantis, we hope to learn from the mythic civilization's epic triumphs and tragic mistakes. These lessons will hopefully guide us in making wiser choices in the here and now that will positively impact our collective future. Now, since Plato first penned his foundational works, many a tale teller has spun a fantastic yarn of long ago times and set it in ancient Atlantis. One of the most recent was a television series that explored the lost continent through the lens of Greek mythology. Epic heroes like Jason and Hercules, along with historical figures like Pythagoras, adventure in a land not unlike Minoan Crete, and we visit the classical legends. Though unseen, Poseidon is an all-powerful presence. Alas, the series was not renewed for a third season, which is unfortunate, as it was heading toward the voyage of the Argo, but the two-season adventure is now immortalized on Blu-ray, DVD, and via streaming service. Warning, spoilers ahead. Season one, episode one, The Earth Bull. In modern times, Jason seeks to solve the mystery of his father, his long ago disappearance at sea. His mini sub is engulfed by a bright light and he awakens in Atlantis. Culture shock causes him to become a fugitive. He unwittingly finds shelter with Pythagoras and his roommate Hercules. He knows of them, but neither is quite what he expected. His father's necklace, the horn from a bull, leads him to the Oracle, who provides him with vague answers, which nonetheless provide him with valuable information. The three companions live out the Theseus legend, slay the Minotaur, conquer the labyrinth, and lift the curse that plagued Atlantis. They are honored by the royal family and hailed as heroes. Alas, that does not last very long, uh, but the series uh, continues. And now, without further ado, I bring you the one, the only, Athena Dugan. Hello, Hercules. How are you? I'm doing great and really looking forward to your show today. Oh, great. Thank you. I want to say hi to everyone out there and hi, Nancy and Elisa. I'm so happy that you two are here today. Um, and the great thing about Nancy and Elisa is that they are um, Labyrinth School facilitators and they are alumni. We went to school together, so I'm really happy to have them here today. Thank you. Yeah. So. Um, Welcome back, Elisa, and welcome, Nancy. Um, so Elisa, you've taken a turn in, in some of the things that you're doing with the Labyrinth, and we're gonna talk about that a little later. And we're gonna introduce Nancy tonight as well, because Nancy is new is, is kind of new to uh, being here on Living, Living Labyrinth. Nancy and I, we've done some work online together. She's come to some of my workshops and Nancy is an architect by design. Um, she could be Daedalus reincarnated. We don't know that, but <laughs> maybe she'll tell us. But um, so Nancy, she, um, she came to the labyrinth uh, by being inspired by the design of the natural and built environment of our place within, um, as it's always been intriguing to you, right? I'm sorry, I butchered that up, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was a path to the mountaintop with a view and an urban space with, it, with nature that was a major design element or a outdoor garden sculpture that intrigued you to start building labyrinths, right? So after that, you went to um, State University of New York College of Environmental Science and Forest, Forestry, and you graduated with a bachelor's in landscape architecture, which was, uh, that's, that's really impressive. And then you wind up working for the New York State, uh, State Office of Parks and Recreation, and as well as for not-for-profit not institutions. So it was in 2019 that you uh, took a summer program. You went to the Veritas uh, 
Labyrinth Facilitator Summer School, and that's where you met Lars, and you started learning more about labyrinths and their design and, um, and becoming a, a facilitator through there. And so now it's, it's evolved where you're, you're building labyrinths all over, you're, you're, um, you're creating them within your company and as a landscape art architect, right? Design consultant. So tell us a little bit more about what you're doing, Nancy, and we'll go from there. And uh, then we're gonna hop right to you, Elisa, and we're just gonna like just chat, chat, chat. Hi, so um, I thought you were gonna say that I came to the labyrinth late in life. <laughs> I really wasn't that exposed to them um, you know, earlier on and um, the, how I happened about the Stony Point Center's labyrinth is I, I saw on their website that they needed somebody to clean up the labyrinth. La Lars was restoring it. And so I was interested in helping that. But by the time I got to it, that was done. So then I looked and saw that he was offering a class on the labyrinths. And so I took that and met you guys and it opened up honestly a whole nother world for me and it's really my focus and interest um, as a landscape architect and in my practice so and it encompasses a lot um, I love designing them doing like tabletop using different materials and creating different patterns with them uh, and I also love working with people and you know exposing them to labyrinths and educating them and running facilities um, facilitating walks and then actually building them in the landscape. So it's sort of all happening at once and I'm um, doing different aspects of it along the way and sort of feeling my sense about it. But I, I find that what I really like about it is, is the patterns and the rhythms of labyrinths and playing with different aspects of that. And then, so that's sort of the design aspect the building is another aspect, but then the facilitating is really exposing people to the labyrinth and having it, having them relate to it, whether it's individually or with the community, through walking, through ritual. So that's where I'm yeah. at. Oh, that's that's great, and and it's it's interesting that the facilitation it almost seemed like maybe it was an afterthought, but. It was definitely something that was included in this in this entire course that that you took with us <laughs> and and with Elisa. It was it was amazing because when um, when I met Elisa, um, she wasn't quite sure about how she was going to address the labyrinth. And since then, she's blossomed so much. Now we know Elisa, you're a sentient energy um, and you have your seventh ray uh, residency program. And when you came to the labyrinth, you, you had um, like Nancy, a curiosity, Nancy had, um, well, I, I'm not going to compare you to, but <laughs> what's happened is that we all have these different energies in which we all come together and, and they sort of blend. And it's like the labyrinth. The labyrinth is a container that just, it takes, it gives, and it helps build. And, and Elisa, you've been uh, doing some great work as well with your, uh, your, are you working with animals in the labyrinth or just uh, ingesting your energy? Uh, thanks, Athena. Um, well, not exactly in the labyrinth, but of course, you know, they're always welcome and they tend to run across them no matter wherever you put them down like in fields and parks and things like that you always get the animals I do have where I live um, in Upper Bucks I have area here on the property where I rent to be able to put labyrinths down and so the the deer walk across the bears have walked across you know every once in a while you'll go out and check the labyrinth in the morning and the lines have been the circuits have been dragged so you know somebody was on it um, but yeah and and kind of like between working with the animals and taking care of them in their homes while their families travel I get to put the bring the labyrinth with me, but for the most part, I bring her with me in my heart, so that when it's always with me, it's a part of who I am now. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so, when I came to labyrinth school, I always loved labyrinths, walking them um, in lots of many places around the world. But I actually hadn't, as you said, put the whole thing together and really been able to see the larger picture. 
So now the labyrinth is a large part of my life. And it's the whole idea about the residency is that people will have an opportunity to journey and I'm going to guide them journeying on the labyrinth. And we're also going to be doing art and drumming and adding sound. And so I'm just sort of excited about how it's all starting to fall together and into place and and looking forward to just creating, uh, helping people create the life they love. Wow, that's, that's excellent. That's excellent. So Nancy, too, like you've done something this past summer because we were in a conversation about that. But before we go on, I, I just want to say we we are so lucky um, and right now, Veritas, they're uh, going to start having uh, live um, classes, uh, summer schools again, uh, facilitation courses uh, live again. And I think the first one's going to take place in Chart, France, which is like if, if you get a chance to get your facilitation cer certification out there, do it. But we were lucky, though, because it's taken three years before this has started to happen. We were the, the uh, last Labyrinth School to actually have live classes and the experience is priceless. So it's like, even when I, I was dumbfounded when I, when I started and, and just seeing how accurate you were with your Labyrinth, because I'm still kind of organic with what I do with my Labyrinth, Nancy. So. Um, when I see what you post, do you have any pictures that you could show us of, of some of your your labyrinths or anything? I don't. I don't no, have. Okay. Yeah, sorry. But well, you know, don't worry about it because maybe you know what people could do is they could go online because you're on Instagram and they can see uh, see some of the things that you've done. So let me ask you: when you started um, with your with your labyrinth work, how close? Did you like revisit some of the myths to see if you had any kind of connection with your labyrinth work through like the the history of the myths and and like Daedalus, how he was this architect? I mean, did you kind of take some pride or some notes in that for yourself? Yeah, I didn't actually. Um, and so I'm interested in in delving into it a little bit more, but I really just know the basic. Ariadne's thread and you know the Minotaur and Minotaur and all that but um no I, I don't so I can't really speak to that yeah yes it's kind of funny because when I think about it it's like not everybody goes through that myth or through that uh history to the labyrinth and and you know and and that I I found uh kind of interesting because even myself when I when I went to the school and they were talking about Ariadne's thread I'm like oh my god they're talking about Ariadne's thread that that's such a you know it's it's very um labyrinth focused but at the same time it seemed very uh kind of mystical and, and I didn't know like how they would address that but it's, it's really interesting that that they have and um Going back to um, the labyrinths themselves, you work a lot with children with your labyrinths, right? And you just uh, completed a summer school. Well, not summer school, but it was summer camp. Yeah, camp. But, yeah, tell me a little bit about that because we had a conversation about that too. Okay, so it was a it's a nature camp and it's a very mindful, um, well being kind of oriented camp. Um, non-competitive and yeah, a lot, very nature oriented. So they asked me if I wanted to run a program for kids and that the age group spans from five to 15. Yes. So, um, and I would see the group, some of them just once and some up to three times. And it was just for five weeks. So I had to create this program for the kids and really quickly learn a lot about the activities that I could do. And it worked out really great. Um, uh, so I taught them some about the history. I taught them a little bit about mindfulness. Um, and then we built a labyrinth together and we walked it and it created different activities. And um, then we talked about the walk and it was really great. And so we used, we used stone and sticks. And I had originally, you know, depending on the age group, it varied. So with the younger ones, we would, um, I laid out part of it 
And then they would take the stones, which weren't really bigger than this, and they would place them in the spaces. And the younger ones loved it. And some of them really wanted to be quiet in the space. Some of them wanted to run around in the space. And I just found that I needed to be really spontaneous and adapt to whatever energy they had and sometimes allow for this kind and then switch, okay, you know, to help whoever had their particular way that they wanted to walk it to, for them to be able to experience it that way. Wow. We did some, um, I used some ribbon, uh, like sort of Amish color, bright color fabrics and they place them in spirals. And then I would show them how to convert the spiral, like in a big scale, how to convert the spiral mm -hmm. to a labyrinth. We did a human labyrinth where we, uh, I would have liked to have done this more with people, but uh, mm -hmm. I only had certain, I had a, my designated space within the, was in the woods. And one day the deck um, was available. So they gave that to me. And so we laid everybody down in the, it was the classical pattern of the labyrinth. And that was really fun. Wow. And, and then I taught them about how to draw the labyrinths and some of them were familiar with meditation. Um, and then we just did, I'd like to do some kind of ritual. That's really important to me. And so we did different activities. Sometimes it, for the older ones, it was more intention focused for the younger ones. It was more like, you know, pretend you're a tree, kiss the sky, like stopping, kiss the floor, you know, the ground with your feet, right. different things like that. Wow. So this was all incorporated while you did the labyrinth. I'm really interested to hear how you did that human, human labyrinth. Was it like a three circuit or? What it was. Oh, it was. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a three circuit. Yeah. I hope you have some pictures of that. You can show us maybe. I yeah, you know, online or something. I couldn't really take pictures. You know, they don't really allow me to take much. So, um, but I know that they have some. So I sort of have to get my hands on it wow. somehow. Yeah, that. Yeah, Elisa, you work with children too. Is it children with the labyrinth or children in your art? Because this is this is. This is a good thing. I, I like working with children, but I just let them run around the labyrinth. I've never like uh, facilitated or guide them except for like this one five-year-old kid that I had that walked the labyrinth like five times until he found the center. I said, just follow the path. He was like, he was like, how do I get in there? How do I get to the middle? And I'm like, just follow the path. You won't get lost. And so he walked it five times and he couldn't find the center. And when he did, he was like, ah! and so was I too. I'm like, wow, because it was right there. But that's what the labyrinth does for us. So, I mean, so it was, that's, that's as far as I, I have gone with working with children. I haven't like, like I said, I haven't guided them or I haven't created the, the craft projects such as yourself and Elisa, Elisa have. And, and that's what's really interesting. I think um, children really benefit and do well when they work with the labyrinth. And I think they go away with so much more. What have your experience been, Elisa? Well, uh, my, my, my first career in, in the world was a teacher. So I, I worked with kids you know, from the classroom and then I had a few um, children uh, doing the painting by touch. And that's kind of where the labyrinth is gonna get married and put together with it. And so some of the children in the program, you know, they're very excited, but at the same time, they remember finger painting. So they wanted to paint really fast. And the whole idea was to be conscious, to be present and have them breathing. So it was really fun doing that meditative piece with them. And then having them paint by touch, paint, put the paint in their hands and touch the canvas or touch the paper. And so the whole idea, it's called soul walking. And the whole idea is they walk the labyrinth and then they come out and paint and then they walk back in and then they walk back out and they continue to paint. So the whole idea is just getting into that rhythm, getting up, walking the path and just finding their center and their calm. And the whole idea is that they can, when they leave, they take it with them. So that hopefully the idea is it transfers into say, a more serious setting like a classroom and they can either like say like pull the seed pattern because that's one of the things i'll be putting in the seed pattern put that in their desk and then they can draw one when they're having a really tough time then maybe they don't get kicked out to uh, uh with detention i forgot what the word was <laughs> i've been there in such a long time but um yeah just something that they could just you know have themselves they can self-soothe self-calm down and then get back right into whatever activity they were already doing
Mm -hmm. Lisa, I love the idea of incorporating the art and the labyrinth. That, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I have some video on my YouTube channel, which is now, I changed the title, it's now officially called The Path. <laughs> and uh, there's some video there of adults painting by touch. Walk, they walked a spiral. And I had a couple of kids younger, like came with their grandparents or something like that. Cause you know, why not? Yeah, yeah uh, so know, that's the whole idea. That's great. You know, I think there's starting to be, I, I don't want to say a trend, but I think the focus is starting to go towards getting children to walk the path as, I don't know, right now as a playful movement that could later develop to a spiritual movement, which the labyrinth offers. But I, I think it's really important. And I'm really hoping that we have more labyrinths and schools and there are some schools that have these labyrinths but do you think that there's somehow could uh be um a curriculum and and if so how could Absolutely. that be addressed i mean how can we start getting that more how do you think that can happen that we could get labyrinths in schools well i like to see them in seed, sorry nance seed patterns like they just have to draw the seed pattern for the three circuit and the seven circuit because really they don't take up that much room and then the kids could grab sidewalk chalk and then they could draw them like at recess and things mm -hmm. like that so they're part of like because like a lot of playgrounds have maps you know hopscotch things like that like just put it out there and wow what is this oh it's a seed pattern and then you know that would be like a little bit of education and then that could move into not to add to teachers pl plates because it's already full of things that they have to do the extracurricular uh, stuff that they need to teach in the classroom besides um, the basics, but make it more like a maybe a, um, forgot the name, but an, an event, you know, bring an event to the school and then they uh, and then from there you can create curriculum. And I, I mean, think between all of us, we probably have lots of ideas that we could get together and write something up and literally submit it to the PTA or um, the Board of Education. I'm not really sure at these days where everything goes, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what were you about to say, Nan? Well, it's interesting um, because I was asked to write a program um, for a district uh, to teach the teachers because they're having a health and wellness uh, yeah. year, like that's gonna be their theme. So like you said, Lisa, starting with the C pattern, um, I think like really kind of the way we learned is to draw the labyrinth and to do the finger labyrinths and to sort of, it's really fun to do the finger labyrinth and then to bring it outside. But there's so many aspects, um, like it is the PTA, uh, like cultural arts that they have where it could be the history and the math and the uh, and the culture and the yeah, art and it's like yeah it's so much so it's sort of putting that together and I, they're looking for it I think wow that's that's interesting yeah maybe I'll look into that too because I think it's really important and actually I sort of start getting involved a little bit with uh, my community um, working with um helping set up your own build your own play it's sort of like uh building a, a pop-up playground so huh who knows maybe that'll go somewhere so we'll see yeah huh so going back to um labyrinths and gardens and on landscapes I know whenever I see a flat space, I want to put a labyrinth on it. And I'm like, how can I like vandalize their property and get out by 10 minutes? So so what has your luck been so far? Or what how how are things looking so far for you? Um getting are you getting uh, labyrinths like temporary labyrinths or labyrinths made on uh you know on a permanent basis? What's what's happening now? Are you talking to me? Yes. Okay. Um, well, it's interesting because I actually saw a space like that in a park. It was a, a little field up next to the river and it was just shouting out to me to build a labyrinth and there was all this driftwood around. So I did like a five circle labyrinth. It took me a few hours 
And there were a few people walking by that were really intrigued and I was done and I was really happy. And I went home and I decided to show my husband. And so we walked back five hours later and it was gone. Somebody in the park, I, I believe, because there were not even, the sticks weren't even around. It was completely gone. And I was just, I was shocked. And so I wound up talking to a maintenance person and they, they told me some stuff, but it didn't seem like it was vandalized. It seemed like they didn't want the art in the park kind of thing. Oh. Um, so that was really unfortunate, but it was a great experience anyway. Um, I also did, so I, I was into horticultural therapy a little bit and I, I, was, I took a class. And so I volunteered at a garden that um, does horticultural therapy in a hospital. And um, one, I guess it was not this summer, but yeah, it was last summer I was there and I said, you know, a labyrinth would be so great here. And she's like, oh, I'd love that because it's also, you know, therapeutic. So be, she was creating this great space. It would just be a great addition. So they allowed me to do, but it was very informal. And I did, just did it with rocks and it was, you know, just in soil. But evidently the staff really enjoyed it and goes out and walks it. So that was really really cool and now they want to put up a sign and maybe down the road they'll do something a little more formal with it like I don't know mulch it out or just just create it a little bit cleaner space oh that'll be nice yeah and what about um what about since you used to work with the uh New York State Parks right yeah so so you can have access to like locations that I needed and 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 the key people to try to get these built. Now was that just would that just be in a certain part of New York or would that just be all the uh, state of New York? How does that work? Say if you the, wanted to build some labyrinth. Yeah, um, I guess so. I am I am actually pursuing that um, in my county. It's a state park. And I reached out to somebody there. It turns out that, um, so I guess what, you know, the best way if you really want to get in is to think about where you want to do it. So the location closest to me was, you know, sort of an obvious situation because it was also a very good choice because of the landscape. Um, you know, you could do it anywhere, but I think for somebody to listen to you, you have to come up with like what your ideas are. So I presented it to a gentleman and he was really nice and really thoughtful about it, but he felt like maintenance was going to be a big, big problem. And so he felt like I needed to um, like call, like connect with the friends of the park and sort of find a partner who would potentially be interested and then they would take care of it because it's really hard, you know, yeah. he said, as he said, even in the best of times for maintenance. So that's really, I think like the trick. And then of course, you know, money and how it's gonna be built, but that, that's not as difficult, I think. It's really getting them to like the idea of a labyrinth in the first place. Right, exactly. Yeah, once they get the idea, I mean, once you get the materials, whether you use pavers or big rocks, I mean, it's going to require maintenance. It, I guess it would depend on on how much, you know. Right, and what the materials are. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So, and um, and Elisa, she makes labyrinths. She makes temporary labyrinths. And what do you do? You're the steward of Mother Earth with your barn. <laughs> Yay. So Yay. tell us about your barn. Yeah. <laughs> My necklace. So um, this is a, actually a labyrinth that I'm working on. I'm going to call it the children's labyrinth, but it's not necessarily for kids, just for kids. It's going to actually be um, because of the transformational work I've been doing lately, mostly for myself, but also um, at the new coaching piece that's been added to my um, my selection of things. Um, I'm creating the children's labyrinth to help people with their inner child to get back to fun, get back to play. Nice. It's going to be rainbow colored. So here's the uh, here's the outside. It, it, this is actually this was an error I gave the woman who's crocheting the plastic 
uh, table covers for me. I gave it to her in inches and instead of feet. <laughs> so she was like, wow. this one's a lot smaller than the last one. And I went, oh, so I said to her, you know what, if you could finish it, I'll use it for myself for meditation. And then now she's crocheting the larger one. That's going to be a three circuit when it's all finished. Oh, cool. And again, the whole idea. Again? I'm sorry. Let us see that again. Just hold oh. it still. This is Florin, right? Yep. Plastic yeah. grocery cup, uh, plastic table cover. Uh -huh. So you can do it in rainbow color. Yeah. And then it has like, I just happened to tie it together. But yeah, it's been, it was a lot of fun. So, so of course, finding the table covers at the dollar store and being able to get all seven. And then for me, I also added the center color is the soul star. That's the eighth color of the rainbow. But also the soul star is also related to the center of the heart of the labyrinth. So another discovery I found along the way listening mm -hmm. in. So I work, I work intuitively with the labyrinth and mine are all because I live in the woods, so I get to use tree trunks and branches and feathers and and also designing for the Lunar Fair, which is a weird and witchy evening walkabout. That's what they call it. That's their words, not mine. <laughs> They're out of um, Boot, New Jersey, and they host a fair, um, full moon and new moon. Although this, because it's all the rain we've had, this week's fair and walkabout is... Um, May 18th is Wednesday night, and it's going to be at the Reddington River Buffalo Farm um, mm -hmm. coming up. So I'm real excited about that, and I believe I'm setting up a seven circuit for them. And the whole idea is I try to make the seed pattern related to the community I'm going to be working with. So I will probably be walking around asking the merchants if anybody wants to just let me borrow <laughs> some of their their items so that I can make the seed pattern, and then the circuits will be the lab, the rest of it. All right. Wow, Ooh. that's that's cool, even so. so, Nancy. So when when you um got when okay, so this is for you too, Elisa. So when you got your certification, did you think you were going to be out there like making labyrinths left left and right, or start out facilitating? What did you have any like high expectations, or did you have something in the work? Um, you know, one of the exercises was to uh, like write up what you want, like a proposal. So I used the hospital that I wound up doing the labyrinth for, and it was so abstract for me at the time. Um, so that was a really cool thing that was definitely translated. Um, but I think that I didn't realize how much I would enjoy facilitating. So I, I love the building, but that's sort of what I love. So the facilitating part added to it. And that that was something I didn't expect. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because who knew that? I mean, I think facilitation definitely takes the lab, labyrinth on a different path. And I think when you facilitate, you can actually experience transformation. I'm not saying that you can't walk a labyrinth without that, but it definitely helps. Uh, I think you definitely benefit from the walk. How about yourself, Elisa? Because I know for a while, like you had, um, I'll let you share. I mean, you already said that, you know, you, you came into, I'll say you came into the labyrinth and you piece it all together with like the, the sentient work that you're doing. And, and finally the labyrinth came together for you and now you facilitate walk. Right, so uh, probably like many people, when uh, the pandemic arrived in the United States in early 2020, I had created all these pieces, moving parts, the business that I was creating. And then March showed up and everything went away. So I really didn't have anything to do. So literally, I woke up first thing in the morning. So first light, I was outside and I was pretty much outside until last light and just tuning in the sentience of earth. I mean, we're all sentient, animals are sentient. It's a, it's about feeling and who we are as people. So the earth has a lot of sentience and a lot of messages. If we just tune in, slow down, tune in and listen. So that's pretty much what I got to do. <laughs> and so um, just visiting with all the, the, uh, the woods here and the animals and then spending time um, actually just 
yeah, listening is probably the best way to describe it. And I was like, well, I've got nothing else better to do. Maybe I should just start trying to build a labyrinth. I'm, you know, Athena is my role model. So I'm like, yeah, I, I could probably figure this out, you know, and try to grab all my information from school. But I have to say, starting with the seed pattern made it so simple for me and so basic. And so I felt really fortunate that I had learned it that way. And um, because I see the circles and I get overwhelmed and nervous. So the seed pattern is a really wonderful place since all life starts from a seed. I thought, this is perfect. This is right up my alley. And I like the fact that the circuits create the rainbow, which is like, you know, as an artist, another piece of my a puzzle for myself. Mm -hmm. So putting that all together, it, it was like the la I built her. And then, you know, that statement, if you build it, they will come. So I put that labyrinth down on the ground and trees out front, like one of the trees landed on the property and they chopped it all up. And the landlord said, you know, do you want the wood? And I'm like, yeah, can you stack it over there? And they did. And then I made a labyrinth. out. Of it. So I remember his first response when he saw it, he's like, what is that? <laughs> so, so I had to tell him it's not permanent. It's it's just trees. And when I'm done, I'll, I'll throw the trees in the woods. So you don't have to worry. And he was like, no, it's okay. You know, he was cool. So they were cool about it. But yeah, but since then I've been, I throw, I put art in my pieces too. So when I do temporaries, I only do temporary, temporary labyrinths now when I go to any of the fairs, because that's what I, I felt that would be a perfect place to teach and educate about the path. Um, I take my art with me too. And then it kind of like makes a circle, like a grand entry kind of thing for powwows. Like when, when we dance in the drum and dance the drums out, that's kind of like the art holds the space, creates the space. And then the labyrinth is, it is within. Wow. That sounds very powerful. Speaking of that too, like recently there was World Labyrinth Day and some people are still celebrating World Labyrinth Day as not too late. And Nancy, you're doing World Labyrinth Day, right? I know I just recently did it with uh, one of another um, facilitator uh, friend of ours, but from the uh, uh, the 2020 class. Oh, yeah. Well, I'd love to hear about how your both your days went. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, let's hear about yours because I know you're you're actually going to okay, I'll tell you about mine. Then you can tell. Okay. So I um actually did a uh, World Labyrinth Day. We had to do it inside um at the Craniath Spiritual Retreat Center in Summerton, PA. So we did a uh, World Labyrinth Day for women veterans, Rashida Hastings and I. Um, and I'll tell you honestly, it was an experience and it was almost a scary ex experience because I got stuck on what kind of labyrinth to make. And I had my tape roller and every time I use the tape roller, some weird sacrifice happens where it cuts my hand and I got blood all over the place. But not, no, this was the night before. But anyway, that's gross. So we don't want to hear about that. But, <laughs> but uh, the next day I was stuck with like, I didn't know what kind of labyrinth to make and I couldn't figure out how to do my tape roller. So I had to do part of it by hand and it didn't turn out accurate. And I'm trying to like hide it so they won't see the imperfections. But you can't hide imperfections on the labyrinth because it's like, bam, it's in your face. But I was able to cheat the pictures a little bit where you can't see it too bad. But anyway, the walk turned out really great. And if anyone doesn't know about World Labyrinth Day, it happens the first Saturday of first Saturday of May, right? Yep. And it's uh, this World Labyrinth Day was for a walk for peace. And it's where everybody walks at one, wait, walk at one for one, right? Yeah. As one. Walk for one as one. Yeah, walk at one as one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so and so you had to um, postpone your, uh, your walk because the weather was just so bad all on the east. Yeah, it was so, pouring. Yeah. Yeah, so it's rescheduled for next weekend. Um, same time, same place. Cool. And uh, yeah, and so I'm sort of glad because I'm thinking a lot more about it. And um, yeah, so I'm going to build it out of 
uh, sticks, but I'm going to let everybody build it. So I'm bringing a carload of sticks and it's going to be like a five circuit labyrinth, um, sort of like the petite chart five circuit, but I'm going to probably do a couple of different ones. And I'm thinking about, because of COVID, I was thinking about the processional, but it's not as powerful as the regular one where you go into that center and come out from it. So I'm going to try to do actually a few by rearranging the sticks, but it's sort of a build, walk, learn about the labyrinth. Uh, yeah, and so, and then I want to try to maybe get a drummer. I, I heard a really great rhythm for walking. It's a really walking rhythm. And so it's not too distracting, but it gives you a grounded feeling. So I'm trying to, like, I wasn't going to do that last time, last week. So I'm trying to figure that out. So tell us exactly where that is. Can if this is going to be open to the public? Yeah, it's open to the public. It's at um, Nyack Memorial Park in Nyack, New York. Oh, great. So that's going to be next Saturday. Was that the 20th? Actually, Sunday. Sunday, the 22nd? Yes. May 22nd? At what time? 12 from noon to 3. Oh, nice. Okay. So they can get in a couple of walks and you're going to try to do a couple of different labyrinths. Yeah, I figure like from 12 to 1, we'll build. If, if we're built, if we're early, then everyone can play around and walk it. Um, but the formal group walking will be at one. And I figure we'll walk for an hour potentially. Mm -hmm. And then I'll try to have maybe sort of like finger labyrinth. I, I do these seed patterns that I stick in um, clear, transparent, like the folders that you use. And then they can, with uh, the markers, the dry markers, they can draw on the, on the plastic and create the seed patterns. And then I can, they can wipe it off and somebody else could do it or, you know, or they could redo it. Uh, so I was just trying to incorporate a little bit of the history, a little bit of the finger labyrinth, a little bit of the walking kind of. Oh, that's great. Wow. So do you, when you're doing these labyrinths or do you have a docent that you work with or it, who helps you with that? I don't. Um, in the past, somebody like in the group that was going to do it would help me. Um, but this time my husband is helping me. Oh. He's helped me in the past. So I'm really fortunate that way. And he, he's, a, he's a labyrinth walker as well, huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so he'll, he'll help me, you know, gather all the stuff. And I'm sure if I need to troubleshoot something, he'll help me. That, that's great yeah yeah and so we have to get together to, to do something i mean we've we've been trying to do this for a long time but we're actually still kind of close elisa what were you going to say oh I, I was going to say suggest to nancy because on wednesday my whole it was supposed to be tomorrow and now that it's wednesday i posted on everything i could possibly find to invite drums, like a drumming club or a drum group to come yeah. to the labyrinth because I want this labyrinth to be noise, loud. So I um, I see, I went to the dollar store after Easter and I grabbed all the plastic eggs and I'm going to fill them with popcorn seeds. So oh. we have shakers. So, I mean, things like that. I, I'm like, idea. local drum circles, if you want to come, come to the labyrinth at the Reddington Buffalo Farm and drum for us because that would be so awesome. So I don't that know experience. where that is. Where Where is it? What, what's the address? Oh, it's in, um, I guess it's in Flemington, New Jersey, but it's called the Reddington River Buffalo Farm. And there's just, obviously it's a farm with buffalo, but also has um, cows. But the idea too is that, you know, uh, the last time I set up was in December there and I set up a seven circuit. And so I probably should have started with the three, but it was still okay. It was a, it was a full moon too, which was perfect. Um, and my whole labyrinth is solar. So you, when you walk it, obviously you can see the path at night, but it, I've, I've been having fun buying solar lights to create the path and um, illuminate it. But yeah, yeah, my whole idea is to get local drum circles to come and play for us. Well, so you had said something interesting. Um, it's from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. And it's also a fair. So come, people come to go shopping as well. Yeah, I have a class from seven to nine. Uh, you work it out though, because she does those monthly, right? 
Yeah, oh, I'm going to do, I'm going to be there again. They have them new moon and full moon. You can go to lunarfair.com or .org. I think it's .com. L-U-N-A-R-F-A-I-R-E. And it's Lunar Fair. And they're out of Booton, New Jersey. And I'm going to, the next time I make a labyrinth for them will be um, June 14th. Flag day. Cool. <laughs> and well, let me ask you something real quick, though, Elisa. Yeah. You said you wanted to have noise on the labyrinth. That sounds like a kind of a contradiction with the labyrinth. Well, I mean, remember that... we we had music on the labyrinth at Veritas. We played happy. That's we all dancing. Because <laughs> I want I want the lab because my whole idea is that yes, it's meditative, but at the same time you can also get married on them. There's so many things that can happen. You can have to celebrate birthdays, celebrate, you know, a life celebration. So yeah. it's kind of like an idea of letting people kind of like break loose a little bit and um, wake up the earth. Yeah, wake up the earth, wake up themselves, remember who they are and you know, walk their soul purpose. That's a whole, um, mine's more, um, me not meditative, it's more, I guess in a spiritual way, is I, that's what I'm using mine for. Cool. That's that's neat. I, you know, because um, that's one way to approach the labyrinth and to bring back the fun and the, to bring back your inner child. I like that, mm -hmm. you know, because a, a lot of people, they see it as a, that it could be very somber, you know. And, and I admit, I'm, I, I, sometimes I'm a little like, uh, depending on the situation, but usually I start people with like, just look down, look at the path and just allow yourself to, to be, I, you know, cause I, I try not to have them, I don't know, get, it depends, like I said, it depends on the situation. I, I don't want them to get too wild on the labyrinth because that's not the, the flow of it. Although I will have them play like some instruments um like or sometimes i'll beat the drum you know the uh the uh frame drum and um but yeah i love it and that reminded me yeah when we went to labyrinth school yeah we were dancing we were actually dancing that labyrinth you had and that that was the first time like i think because kate the instructor kay she yeah. that's how she introduced it to introduced it to us like when we first went out there we were music we had the instruments we were singing we're, it was really fun I think we got receipts what's that I said we got receipts so yeah. <laughs> it was great so we did it it's a good combination when I when I did it with the kids we did both we would sing at the labyrinth or dance on the labyrinth but it was interesting because of COVID, I needed to space them apart as they walked through it. So I had a chime, a bell basically. And so every six seconds I rang the bell. Well, it was going on the whole time that they were walking because there were a lot of kids. And it turned out that they really liked that part. So when I said, okay, now, you know, what do you want? We can walk this one any way you want. They were like, the chime, the chime. They really <laughs> liked just that constant sound but it was calming sort of like the you know the beat of a drum wow wow that's that's really awesome yeah it's it yeah because i know um yeah i guess let yourself go and kids will kids will really let you know what they want to do in the labyrinth and i know when i've had my labyrinth a lot of kids either run them except for that one so, you know, rocket scientists, I had to, had to walk it five times, but I've seen a lot of the kids run around the labyrinth. And what I used to use is like small rocks. And that always made me nervous, but the kids, they never knock the rocks out of place. And I'm like, wow, they're walking it better than the adults. They're running it and not knocking Maybe. anything out. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Let the kids do what they want on the labyrinth, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. So we are, we are, what's, how are we doing with time, Hercules? We're doing good? Yeah. Okay. So. I'm going to have to unmute there. Uh, you're doing okay. You got like uh, 10 minutes. Oh, good. Good. Okay. But you can end it early if you'd like, uh, or you can extend it uh, beyond if you'd like as well. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll just talk about some things that we have uh, coming up or um, if you want to add something more, Nancy, like um, how do you see your labyrinth when you going forward? 
like your walk that's coming up that you're doing. Um, because the labyrinth, I mean, it is seen as a, a spiritual tool. And, and a lot of people don't see, see it that way. Or a lot of people are afraid of the labyrinth. And that's, I was sort of getting that sense that maybe when you did it in the park, maybe that happened. Or maybe it's just my, my biased thought. Because I know whenever I built one in the park, people are afraid when they see the labyrinth. And I did, um, for my last build, I did two temporary labyrinths with wood chips. I did a triple spiral in which I surprised the crap out of myself because I never did a triple spiral labyrinth and I had to walk it to make sure that it was correct. And I'm like, wow, it is. Wow. I got through all three circuits, you know, by going one way in and one way out. And um, the first one I did was the seven uh, circuit, but I did have a lot of people that were curious and I did have a lot of people that walked it and a lot of the uh, mothers and the children did. And I wind up leaving it up. The guy said, leave it up. And then um, somebody told me, they said, oh, when I saw it, it was still up a few days later, but nobody was walking it. I said, well, she doesn't know unless she stayed out there all day, but um, the problem that, uh, going back to it, the problem that I, I ran into when I do create labyrinths is that people are curious and people are afraid. Have you had that experience in your uh, labyrinth creation? Um, I haven't had people be afraid. I'm thinking like through that. Um, no, everybody's curious. I mean, with the kids, there may have been one or two kids that wanted to just sit on the side, but then they would join after they watched. So maybe they were a little leery, um, but not really. And the whole spiritual part is just, is fascinating to me because I think sometimes I struggle with how much to speak to that because I don't want them to be afraid or, you know, some people are really, really attracted to that. And some people are a little skeptical. So, but you really want people to understand the potential. So it's just a little balancing act, I find. Yeah, yeah. How about, what about you guys? Yeah. Um, I've had, I think when I, the last time I set it up for the Lunar Fair, there was a handful of folks well, first of all, the challenging was they had me set us off to the side. So it wasn't until nighttime when everybody saw the lights <laughs> that came over and they said, oh, what are you doing over here? And, you know, asked a few questions. Um, that was the one where the kids were running around and some of the circuits, because I don't tack them down. I found that I don't have to. So at the end of at night in the dark, I don't have to go looking for all the yard stakes. I can just lay the labyrinth and it's fine. But when the kids ran it, some of them their feet got caught and they dragged it. And it was like, oh, okay, I'll be fixing it. And someone's trying to help me. No, 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 don't worry about it. I'll get it later. And she's like, she didn't even know what to do anyway. I mean, it was a spiral. So it wasn't like it, you know, they had to replace everything. But so that was funny. And then one other person broke, walked it really fast. And he came out and he went, I don't feel so good. I'm like, well, it's not, you're not supposed to run it. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's a spiral. It's going to make you sick if you walk it really fast. He's like, I don't know. I think I got to go sit down somewhere. <laughs> it, was, it was, that was kind of funny. But um, for the most part, I think the first time I put it at Lunar Fair, there were a lot of people curious. And then a couple of jokesters yelling, it's amazing. When they walked out, I'm like, yeah, go away. <laughs> so, yeah, like, no. But, um, you know, but for the most part, the reason why the idea of the drum and the rattle idea came to me was because at the very end of that fair, two women came in and asked me if they could drum and rattle on the labyrinth. And I was like, yeah, you can do whatever you want, you know. So it was really and they were the only ones on it. So it was really cool in that kind of full moon light, solar light mm -hmm. path. And women were drumming and singing and chanting. It was yeah. really beautiful, actually. So that okay. I was like, hmm. I wonder if we could do that more often. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, yeah. So the idea is to bring the drum circles on, but not, they don't have to play the whole night, but like maybe at a certain time, yeah, absolutely. people come to drum and they want to walk and with their hand drum or however it makes them feel or walk and shake a rattle to a beat, you know, yeah. it's really kind of an idea of finding your rhythm 
and then, you know, make it your own, make the walk your own. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. yeah that's pretty much all you can do because the walk is your own. I mean, you know, that's, that's lovely though. And I have to remember that too, because I love, I do love drumming. I am a drummer and uh, yeah, I think that's great to bring it to the labyrinth too. Okay. So um, what's next, Nancy? Um, well, World Labyrinth Day, creating this sort of, like I mentioned, the proposal for teaching the teachers and how to bring it into the schools. Um, I'm working on getting the friends group for the, the friends of for the park. And what else am I doing? Um, I want to, I don't have a labyrinth at my own property. Um, so I would love to be able to do that. Uh, I just have to think about it. We have a lot of deer, and so it's just a little hard to figure out exactly how to do it. Oh, deer love walking the labyrinth. <laughs> What's that? Deer love walking it? Yeah, <laughs> or animals, I should say. Like, I notice I, I, I attract a lot of, like, you know, local uh, pets and stuff, well, birds and stuff. Bunnies like to walk it. Yeah, Weapons. bunnies. Yeah, yeah, because wow. when the snow was this past summer, a winter, I actually left the, the circuits out, not this group, but a, another set of them. Mm -hmm. I left them on the ground through the winter and they were fine in the spring. I mean, it is plastic bags, but um, in the morning, sometimes when I go out and look on the ground, there's like bird wings, like they're, well, I must have, when they open their wing, maybe to just stretch or something. It was the coolest thing. There were tracks wow. all over the labyrinth. It was really neat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, and whatever happened, you had, um, some bear that in the neighborhood oh, yeah. at one point. Oh no, he's still around. <laughs> oh wow. Did you have yeah, your labyrinth he's... down? No. Well, because oh. we had to finally mow the lawn. So the labyrinths are up right now. But um yeah. But wow. the lights are still outside, you know, they're staying charged. But yeah, luckily we've had to stop feeding the birds because he just wanted the bird seed for himself. <laughs> <laughs> that is wild. Yes, and what do you what do you have coming up, Elisa? You have Luna Fair and, and what else? Yes, Luna Fair on Wednesday, and then again in June, and then through the summer, June, July, and August, I'll be at a show. This, I mean, um, something called a Maker's Market. It's an art fair in um, Stewartsville, New Jersey, with Propagate Studio and Sam Matthews, who's the proprietor of the studio, and I'll be one of the makers for the summer, which I'm real excited. So I'll have a booth space with my art. And then on the weekends or whenever the studio was open, I'll be teaching the labyrinth, teaching people how to make their own temporary or permanent, like, you know, guiding them on what they look like. And then, of course, the uh, the coaching piece that I've added recently and guiding people to create their own residency, which is create their own art create, or whatever it is that they do that make brings them joy. But to use the labyrinth as the tool, as the guide mm -hmm. and teaching them how to not teaching well yeah guiding them on walking their path whatever it looks like yeah so getting people to step out and give it a whirl <laughs> and and how can they how can they get in touch with you um i have a i'm on social media and um in linktree i have a linktree if that helps um it's the linktree and then my um phrase is linktree and then the forward slash the path just one okay. word and then it links to everything. So Sam taught me how to do that. And so I've listed all the social media, the YouTube, the website. It's all attached on the Linktree page. Oh, great. Okay. And yeah, same thing with you, um, Nancy. So are you going to do the summer camp again this year? No, I'm not. Um, I was invited to, but um, I... I rather not do a whole length like that again. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do something else. Yeah. Not sure okay. yet what, but okay. But let us know. How can people get in touch with you and see your work? Um I explore labyrinths uh at gmail.com is my email and explore explore labyrinths on Instagram. And that's that's the extent of it right now. Yeah, and, and I could tell you for both your labyrinths are like absolutely amazing. 
And it's, it's so interesting that we talk a lot and I haven't had the experience to walk one of your labyrinths and nor Elisa's <laughs> except, yeah. And we've even, we've even gotten together and yeah. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't um, experienced walking the labyrinth and um, yeah. So we'll have to get together and, and I don't know, have an alumni overnight party, uh, overnight labyrinth party. <laughs> Sounds great. And you have yeah. to tell us what's down the pike for you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, um, on May 27th, I have um, an online handheld labyrinth walk and you can go to Philadelphia labyrinth walk at meetup.com and sign up for that. Um, I am charging a small fee for that. And, um, and pretty much we do, uh, I do a guided meditation and uh, I might sing or drum a little bit. So <laughs> we'll see. And then I have some other stuff coming up in June, another solstice uh, walk with Fairmount Park. And um, actually May 21st, backtrack next Saturday, I'm going to be with a tiny WPA in which is called Build Your Own Play, Your Own Play uh, Playground. And I'll be either building part of the playground or building another labyrinth. So we shall see. I'm becoming the ultimate lumberjack. So <laughs> I'm learning to actually work with uh, power tools and hopefully I'll get my um, my cradle of liberty labyrinth built through them. Oh, yeah. so we'll see. Yeah. So there's stuff coming up. Great. Yeah. So thanks. You guys, it was so good talking with you. I mean, if you guys any have any questions or you want to share some last minute words, some last minute labyrinth wisdom, have at it. The floor is open. <laughs> share a light. I have I'm, actually, go ahead. I'm going to let uh, your uh, guest here also, I'm going to ask her to go mute. This way, if she has a question, she can ask it uh, as well. Absolutely. I'm sorry, you can continue. <laughs> um, well, I just wanted to share one thing that I recently came across. Um, it's a, it's uh, from the Little Prince, um, Antoine de Saint uh, Exopuri, I forget, I don't remember exactly how you pronounce his name, Antoine de Saint uh, Exopuri, I think it is. From the Little Prince, do you know that the story of the Little Prince? Mm -hmm. So there's this quote that I totally love that I recently read, and I feel like it relates to the labyrinth for me. And it's quote, and now here is my secret, a very simple secret. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential, what is essential is invisible to the eye. And it just feels so spot on for me with the labyrinth because I really feel like it it's the heart. That's the essence of it. Yeah. So I just want to share yeah. that. Thanks. Very true. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Would anybody wow. else like to leave us with some thoughts or words or quote? You know, it's it's so funny. I was I've had so many thoughts and so many, um, I don't know, so many things about the labyrinth or so many songs that I love, but one of them that keeps popping in my head and it really doesn't have to do with the labyrinth, but the word walking is in it. So I'm like, yeah, that's, that's for a labyrinth. And I think I may try to do it tonight since it's a, a um, full moon, blood moon. I may go walking after midnight. And that's and play Patsy Klein song or sing it in my head. You know, I go, I'll walk it after midnight in the moonlight. <laughs> you know? Oh, wow. And yeah. the eclipse. So be careful out there okay. because a very large portal is opening. So don't get lost out there. <laughs> oh, sure won't. <laughs> I'll be right in my yard. So <laughs> if I get lost, <laughs> then I'll be in a maze, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys so much. It's good that we could get together and chat and, and you know, we'll do more of it in, in the future. And until then, happy walking. Uh, you too. Happy full moon. Blessed. Uh, Blessings from the path. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Blessings from the path. That's right. Yeah. And um, yeah. And if you can, uh, you guys could follow me at Walkers of the Labyrinth. I'm on um, Instagram and on uh, Facebook as well. So feel free to contact me there. And thank you, Hercules, for today's show. And we're going to be on YouTube. And he's going to um, give us more information about that when he does. It should post at midnight if all goes well. If all does not go well, it'll post by Tuesday midnight. And uh, I will give the link uh, to uh, Athena and she'll forward it to all of you. If you're friends of mine on Facebook, I'll post it on my page as well. So thank you to everybody. This was awesome. I wish you all success uh, in all your labyrinthine adventures. Uh, be well. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thanks, Ruthann. Good night.